Number one gives us a graph of the thermostat settings of an empty apartment. It's at 65 degrees from 4 a.m. to 5 p.m., so this middle chunk. And then it's moved down to 50 degrees from 5 p.m. Um, until 4 a.m. So this is the graph that represents it. We're calling it H of X. So the owner of the apartment decides to change to a new schedule and they decide to set the thermostat um, to three hours. So change it to three hours later in the morning and evening. So on the same axis, let's sketch the graph of this new function. So they decide to you know move this up three hours. So instead of setting it to, um, or sorry, to move it later. So instead of starting this at 4 a.m., Okay, the 50 degrees, they move it up to 7 a.m. Okay, so that means that it's going to reach its peak height three hours later as well. So instead of this happening at 6, it's going to happen at 9. Okay, then they're going to move this out three hours as well. And then the uh, minimum temperature is going to get back um, three hours later as well. So we just moved each of these by three hours ahead. And so then we get this new graph where everything is just shifted um, to the right three hours. And so then part B says, explain what H of 6.5 equals 65 means. So this is on the original um, setting at 6.30 in the morning, right? So this is 6 in the morning. 6.5 would be 6.30. So at 6.30 a.m., the thermostat is set to um, 65 or is at 65, the temperature actually um, in the apartment. So the temperature is at um, 65. So then if H of 630 is 65, so the original setting, if at 630 the temperature is 65 degrees, what's the corresponding point on the graph of G? So now, remember, G moved everything over um, three hours or later three hours. So this is going to happen at 930 instead that it's going to be 65 degrees since we're three hours later. Um, and then it says use the function notation to describe this. So that's the function notation. Now we want to express G in terms of H. So remember that G of 9.5 is equal to um, the 6.5, right? Is equal to H of 6.5. So these are corresponding values. So if we want to write G in terms of H, so um, what was the input variable they were doing here? So this was H of X. Okay, so then G of X. So now if X is this, okay, H of X is three less than that. Okay, so H of X is gonna be equal to X minus three. Those are the corresponding values. So G of X equals H of X minus three. All right, number two says a pumpkin pie recipe says to bake the pie at 425 degrees for 15 minutes, then to adjust the temperature down to 350 for an additional 45 minutes. If the function P gives the, uh, the oven setting, okay, so the temperature that the oven is set at in degrees, T minutes after the pie is placed in the oven, explain what P of 30 means in context. Okay, so this means um, that when the pie has been in the oven for 30 minutes, okay, the temperature is set to 350, okay? So the pie has been in the oven for 30 minutes and the oven is set to 350 degrees. So Diego then discovers that the temperature inside the oven is actually always 25 degrees warmer than the setting. So the function B gives the actual temperature of Diego's oven. So if P of 30 equals 350, so remember this is the set, the, um, the setting. So this is what the, the oven is set to. What would the actual temperature be? 
So remember the actual temperature is 25 degrees warmer. So B of 30 would actually be 25 degrees warmer or 375 degrees. So after 30 minutes, if the oven is set to 350, the actual temperature is 375. Um, so then let's write an expression for B in terms of P. So now we have that B of 30 equals 375, and we know that P of 30 is equal to 350. So they have the same X values, so B of X equals P of X, but plus 25. So at 30 minutes, okay, B is just 25 degrees warmer than the original setting. Number three, here's the graph of f of x, um, and the, or y equals f of x. So on the same axis, sketch g of x so that it's f of x plus two. So this is gonna be this exact same function here. Okay, so it's gonna be this exact same function, but it's gonna be two higher. So we're just gonna move it two higher. So I see this point right here that I'm just gonna move up um, two units. So I see that this one's at negative two. So I can just take this function and I can just pull it up two units. Okay, so you're just gonna move everything up two units. That would be a sketch of it. So if you, you know, since you can't move just a highlighter up, this is what I would do. Um, in my book is I would say, okay, negative two is going to go up to zero. Negative four is going to go up to negative two. This one's kind of at zero. So this point's going to go up to two. Okay. And just kind of sketch that way. Then you have a bit of a sketch in there. Okay. So it's just going to be moved up two units. Now this next one, H of X equals F of X plus two. Okay. So that means that if, whoops, if we have, um, so H of um, zero is actually gonna equal F of two. So the function at two, okay, the original function at two is gonna be the same as if for H of zero. So this is gonna move everything to the left two units. Okay, so this is gonna move everything, whoops, to the left two units. So this X equals zero is gonna move over to negative two. This one where it's kind of at x equals two is gonna move over to zero. This is gonna move over two units, but it's just gonna to move to the left two units now. And then how do the graphs of G and H compare to F? So that's what we talked about um, here. So um, G is up two units or a shift up two units. And then H is left two units. All right, then number four, the graph shows the height of a tennis ball after t, t seconds after it's been hit. So here's that function, um, models this ball. So how high was the ball when it was hit? So right away when it was hit, so it's traveled for zero seconds. That's the y-intercept. So it was five feet when it was hit. So suppose a second ball follows the same trajectory but is hit from seven feet. So it's going to do this exact same thing, but instead of hitting from five feet, it's going to hit from seven feet. So it's just going to be two feet higher um, starting point. So every point is just going to be two feet higher. So just draw a sketch of that and then write an equation for the function g of t that defines this height. So, um, so g of t would equal the original function, but just two feet higher. So f of t plus two. Or if you wanted to use this, right? So then you're just gonna be two higher, so you're just gonna add two, so then this is just gonna be a seven. So G of T would be seven plus 30T minus 32T squared. Number five, describe a horizontal translation. So remember horizontal um, is this way. Okay, so horizontal translation of a line that contains the two labeled points. So moving it, moving this function left or right. 
So we want to move it to this point. So then let's look at where there's a corresponding point that we could just move over. So we're only going to move it horizontally. So we want to take this point and move that point to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. So we're going to um, shift. So shift um, right eight units. Then this next one says a vertical translation. Okay, so now we just want to move it vertically. And remember that vertical is up and down. So now if we just want to move it up or down, so now we want to find the point vertically that will be able to move straight up to that. So I just went to the point, went down, found it here, and then draw straight up to that. And so this is going to be one, two, three, four. So a shift um, up four units. All right, then the last one, number six, does the function f or g fit the data better? So g is this one down here. And then f is um, this linear one here on the top. So which one models the data better? And I would say it's g of x, um, number one, because it's a similar shape. So it's curving like those dots are versus the orange one is just straight. Um, and then G of X, the line is closer to the points or the points are closer. Generally closer, not all of them are closer, but generally closer um, to G of X.